Hey there. Uh, I want to revisit a problem we did a few weeks ago, and that was a boundary value problem using the shooting method. And as a prelude to what we want to do in the future, uh, what I'm going to do is the same problem using a finite difference method where we construct basically a, a matrix equation, in this case sparse matrix, and we solve the system uh, in that way. And I know we've done uh, similar things in the past, but um, the idea here is... Um, Although while this is efficient, gives accurate answers, and it's pretty fast, in some cases it still might be inefficient. So I want to use this as a prelude to build out a, a different type of way to solve these equations. So this should be pretty simple, pretty quick, and you know it's just finite difference, and we've done very similar, similar things in the past. So let's just um, jump into it. Okay, so as far as imports, the only thing we need, of course, are NumPy, and we're going to use, um, we're going to take advantage of the fact that our matrices are going to be sparse again. Uh, so we're going to use the sparse solver and pull in the sparse uh, diagonal command so we can actually build a matrix. And if you recall back to, uh, let me actually run this before I forget. Uh, if you recall back to our original shooting uh, method uh, boundary value problem, this here was the equation that we were trying to solve. So second, uh, second derivative of y with respect to x plus 3y is equal to 0. Uh, subject to the boundary conditions, y at 0 is equal to 7, and y at 2 pi is equal to zero. Now this is a pretty simple problem, it can be done by hand. Um, so I've coded up that function here, which is the exact solution here. So let me just run that uh, and let's just plot it out. So let's just say x is equal to np dot lin space zero comma two times np dot pi. Uh, so uh, let's do plt dot plot x comma return exact x and we'll make it a black line. So that's what this uh, basically looks like. It's a, it's a cosine wave essentially. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of this. I don't know why these line numbers are coming in here. I updated a uh, bunch of libraries on the system recently and it uh, tends to just want to put line, uh, line numbers in there randomly. Okay, so the uh, technique we're going to use to do this is called finite differencing. So, for example, we're going to approximate the uh, first derivative, for example, would be like delta y over delta x for very small delta x's. So, we don't have any first derivatives in this equation. We do have a second derivative. Uh, and let me type in here the formula we are going to use to approximate that. So, here we go. I'm not going to dwell on this that much because we've done very similar things uh, to this in the past. But this is our differencing, sch differencing scheme to approximate the second derivative. We've discretized the uh, x values so that there are a bunch of points, you know, x, say x1 all the way up to, up to, up to x sub n. So at the ith point, the function value is uh, y sub i. So our derivative approximation is basically the uh, y value immediately before minus two of, two of the current y value, y sub i, plus the uh, following y sub uh, i plus one value. And that's all divided by this delta squared, which is the, um, the increment of our spacing. So the smaller you get this, the more and more accurate this approximates the second derivative. So now we can uh, rewrite uh, this uh, differential equation approximately as this system of linear equations. So instead of one uh, ODE, we're going to have a bunch of linear, in this case, linear equations, but algebraic equations in general. And then we will have two additional constraining uh, equations to handle these boundary conditions. So uh, y sub 1, or however, whatever your first y point, y sub 1, we'll call it, is equal to 7. And whatever you call this last point um, is going to be equal to 0. So let me write this out in a matrix form um, that will contain the, uh, will contain the boundary value uh, components too. Okay, so uh, here what I've done is kind of, I, I wrote out an explicit example, only taking a few internal grid points. So in this case, you probably want to get an a uh, accurate result because your delta would be very good, but we have four internal kind of grid points where we have these approximations for our differential equation, and then two more um, just, you know, regular, very simple equations for the boundary, uh, boundary values. And in matrix form, you get something like this, where this derivative here is our um, approximation of the second derivative. So it's basically just the coefficients here make up these, these values, say 1 minus 2, 1. And then I factored out this delta because it's common to, um, delta squared is common, common to every, uh, every entry in this matrix. 
And this matrix over here is the three uh, times our y values. So if we consider this second row here, this three times this one is just going to basically pull out this three y2 here. And the reason this one third is here is because this has to kind of multiply out to one. So three times one third is one. And this times this uh, will give you the y1, which is equal to seven. And so obviously we can add these two matrices uh, together uh, just to get a single single square matrix and then the solution to the problem essentially is just finding the inverse of that matrix. And that's kind of also why um, I chose a linear differential equation up here. If it were nonlinear, you'd have to run it through some sort of solver like um, F-solve uh, from SciPy Optimize. But the um, the idea is still sim similar. You have a system of you now have a system of algebraic equations uh, which you need to solve. So let us code up the uh, let's code up this matrix equation um, using some sparse matrices. So what I'm going to do is just uh, define a bunch of x values using the linspace command from zero to two times pi. Uh, for now, I'm explicitly going to set it to 50. And then because I want to make this a little bit more generic, I'm just going to, um, in the variable n, just uh, take the, the number of elements in this array. So n is equal to x dot size. And I'm going to get my delta directly from this array here, just by saying delta is equal to um, np dot diff add diff of x. So it's the, the spacing, grid spacing between these two, um, any two of these elements. So, uh, of course, I have a typo somewhere. Uh, I think I had closed the notebook at one point, so let me rerun it. Win space. Sorry about those sirens. Okay, so I waited for those sirens to go by and fix the typo. And then I don't really want uh, delta as an array. I just want it as a number. So all these entries are going to be the same, right? So uh, print delta. See, they're all the same. So I'm just going to pull out the first element of this array and make that um, the delta variable. So delta is equal to delta zero. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll edit this out, but we need to type in, uh, we need to make vectors for each of these diagonals. So we need a vector of length n that has the minus twos, and then two vectors of all ones that have length um, n minus one. Okay, and um, let us build this. We'll call this m1 for matrix um, matrix one, and we'll call this m2 for matrix two. And then to get our kind of final matrix, we'll just add them together. So let us come down here and say, m1 is equal to uh, this expression using the sparse diags, sparse diags command to make the matrix. Uh, here are these um, non-zero elements in our in this array here. And this array tells us which, um, which diagonal they're on. So zero corresponds to the main, minus one corresponds to the row or the diagonal right below and one to the uh, diagonal immediately above. And then I'm just gonna distribute through this delta squared um, just so I don't forget about it at a later time. So let me run that. Make sure it's good. Um, and now let us create, and I'm going to handle this, these boundary values um, in a bit because uh, the way I built it right now, this entry, which should be zero, it should, uh, should come out to be minus two over delta squared. Let's just make sure that that's actually the case. So m, m1, zero comma zero. You see that's not a, a zero uh, number. So we're going to have to reset that in a bit. So let me do that. And now let's create this diagonal of ones. So here is the um, di or, uh, here's the matrix, uh, which I called M2, which is just this. And I did it all in one line and I put the three right into the matrix build command. So there's our diagonal, uh, the zeroth element. This is only has elements on the diagonal. So everything else is zero. And that element, you know, it, it's an N by N matrix. So, um, Instead of, uh, so I have to reset these two elements to zero. So let me do that here. So uh, M2, zero comma zero is equal to zero. And M minus one minus one is also equal to zero. So now let me come up to uh, M1 here and do those uh, boundary conditions. So this is just resetting that first row of this matrix to zero and the last row of this matrix to zero. And now we're uh, good to go. We should be able to just solve the system. So um, why do I have an extra space here? 
Let me just make sure it takes this. Okay, there's an issue. Oh man, these incessant typos. That doesn't belong there, it belongs here. And it's not M, it's M2. So cool. Now, it's as simple as calling Y is equal to uh, sparse self uh, M comma B, where B is our uh, vector of knowns here. So it's seven and then the rest zeros. And we never define this. So let me come down here, um, right under here and define B. So B is equal to NP dot zeros. Um, the length is N. And then B zero is equal to seven. That should do it. And if there are no issues here, this should run. Oh yeah, and I need to add those two uh, matrices here. So up here, I'm gonna say M is equal to M1 plus M2. Oh my God, there we go. So let's plot out our exact uh, solution, which we had uh, shown before. So this function is called uh, return exact. So let's do it in a new cell here. plt.plot x comma return exact x and we'll make this a black line. So there we go. There's our true solution. And underneath uh, underneath it, let's plot uh, this solution using uh, blue dots, I guess. So plt.plot uh, x comma y and we'll make these blue dots. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, down in this cell, let's plot out the error. Let's say e for error is equal to our uh, y values minus um, return exact of x. So this is basically the uh, the error. So let's plot out that error. Plot plt dot plot x comma e. And again, we'll make it a black line. Oh, for Christ's sake, if I had a brain in my head, I would be very, very dangerous. So delete that. That's a minus. So here's our error. Um, it's not too bad on the scale of things. Um, so the maximum value here is roughly six, uh, 7 and minus 7. Our error is basically a little more than 0 0.01 out of that. And we can fiddle around with um, the density of points, as I mentioned. If we cut this down from 50 to, say, uh, 10, uh, you see the results are rather poor. And if we run the cell for error, um, the error is now you know, pretty damn, pretty damn big. And if we uh, were to do the opposite and crank up this number, so instead of 50, let's, uh, instead of 10, let's just make it 5,000. Run, run that. So that looks pretty good. And you see the error is now pretty, pretty small. Okay, that's it. Uh, I know we've done similar things that were along the same lines before, both with differential equations and in the, in the Monte Carlo uh, simulation we did for, for um, stock market type stuff, we also kind of use this, this idea of linear systems. And while most, you know, uh, physical systems are going to have some non-linearities to it where you'd have to use something like s solve um, that kind of precludes you from using this, this uh, sparse matrix idea, or at least finding the solution uh, via a sparse matrix, um, you know, finding the inverse of a sparse matrix. Um, the idea here is that the matrix involved is still pretty large, albeit, albeit sparse. Um, in this case, we, we did a 5,000 by 5,000 matrix at one point. And for a lot of real physical problems where you may, instead of having one differential equation, you might have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions even, um, this really isn't that practical. So what I wanted to show in like a forthcoming video is the idea of what might be called uh, reduction of order models. So what we're gonna do is take the idea of the, the polynomial interpolation, and we're probably only gonna use six or seven interpolation points and try to solve the same system. And while we won't really get as great an accuracy uh, as we, we saw here, it'll still be pretty damned good. And when we move on to the idea of spline interpolations and, move, and using that to solve differential equations, uh, we can still get uh, more and more accurate results with much fewer, many fewer uh, data points. So the matrix will be much smaller. So yeah, that's where I want to go with this. Um, I don't know when those videos will be coming out. I have some, several things I want to do uh, in, in the meantime. People have asked about different option pricing models, option pricing models such as um, um, binomial pricing 
and the idea of like a Heston model for a model in um, you know stock moving and spot stock movement and the changes in uh, changes in volatility. So I don't quite know when those will be coming out, but it'll be you know in the next uh, one or two months. So um, yeah, until next time, I will call it quits now and see you later.